So here we have the ubiquitous blue violet, common blue violet. Pops up in everyone's yards. This is a, uh, a flower which is extremely adaptable. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it, it can just carpet a whole area. It comes in two color forms. There is the regular uh, blue, common blue uh, violet, but it also comes in a confederate form. Here you can see several of them growing right next to each other. And here's one plant next to the other one, and you can see one's a confederate form of it. On the right, the confederate violet, and the common blue, they're actually, on the left, they're actually the same exact species. This is just nice to see them side by side. You can see that they're the same thing, but growing together. Violets are uh, full of vitamin C, so these actually flowers used to be added to salads for color and would add extra, flavor, uh, would add extra color as well as vitamin C. Um, I believe also uh, the leaves are also edible, but they're nowhere near as tasty as the flowers. Some people would candy the flowers, other ones just added as they were. Uh, now, you see these flowers, and these are the common flowers which are to attract pollinators. But if these don't get visited, it forms another kind of flower called a cleistogamous flower. Cleistogamous flower means closed marriage, and it would then mean that, uh, that it, it doesn't even open, it self-pollinates. Now this isn't a great thing in the sense uh, that you're, you know, inbreeding and so forth, but if it's the only chance to produce any kind of seed at all, then they do it. And so, um, sure, they got the colorful ones in case of a uh, pollinator comes by, but they've got other ones that don't grow up, they never open, they're really close up underneath the leaves and Close to, the, close to the main body, they don't need to pollinate at all, and they use those as a backup plant in case they don't, they, they don't get pollinated. And that's one of the reasons you got violets just about anywhere, just blanketing an area, because they are so adaptable and have these kinds of things. This is a host plant for several different species of, uh, of insects, uh, but in particular, uh, there, there are several fritillaries, uh, kind of orange uh, butterflies, several in the same family, that use violets as the caterpillar food, the host plant for the, for the young caterpillars. So leaving a few around can be really good for them as well. Um, this it has been brought with all sorts of historical uh, pieces too. The common story of, of Viola, the Roman name for Io, um, was, uh, th that gives the family the name, has to do with a beautiful woman who Zeus, the king of the gods, Greek gods, fell in love with. He came to visit her. Um, at one point, his wife Hera, unfortunately the, the, uh, the goddess of marriage, um, you know, uh, the patron goddess of marriage, found out about this and she went looking for him. And in one story, um, it was her that changed Viola, uh, Io, into a cow. And then her tears were what became these little violets that then brought to the ground. And another version, Zeus makes the violets in order for her to have something sweet to eat. In yet another version, Zeus changes her into a cow so the wife cannot catch her and make it even worse um, on her. In all cases, poor Io Viola is the one who suffers in all of this. Uh, this became a symbol of Bonapartist movement. As uh, Napoleon famously said, he would return with the violets in the spring. And apparently his wife uh, was a, was favored of this and would consume something like half a cup a day, um, and he would lay he supposedly laid uh, laid violets at her grave. A beautiful plant, I know, so common that we overlook it and so forth, but the reality is that this is a, an important wildflower, very adaptable, and that served it well. One of the many kinds of violets uh, that we have in the state, but probably the most common, the common blue violet in both its common blue and Confederate forms.